Welcome back everyone, it's your travel friend Herman and today come and join me on my recent trip to the UK. On this trip, I focus on London and some of the attractions and places that you can visit while you are in the city. Now let's get right to it. After arriving and going on to my hotel and dropping everything off, my first stop was the Albert and Victoria Museum. The Victoria and Albert Museum is one of the city's premier museums. It's actually free admission and it has a wide array of exhibitions from all over the world. One in particular was actually this uh, replica of the uh, columns that you'll see in Rome that detailed the history of Rome. So I'm heading to the Imperial War Museum. It, just like my last trip when I went to Spain and Portugal, they, you know, the British also had their large British Empire uh, at one point. So it also makes for a good museum uh, visit to to see all these things. So with the large, with the long military history, should be a good one. And here's the museum. And this is one that's actually free. So again, this makes it better. buff like myself, you'll definitely like to check out the World War I exhibitions uh, of this museum. It had probably the more extensive one that, that I've seen. Uh, it also had, you know, the, met, the replica trench and all that, just to give you a little bit of feel of what, the, of what it was like. Well, that was a really good uh, museum. Definitely recommend it. I think it's, uh, you know, had a good exhibitions. Again, free, can't beat that. Uh, but also one thing that was really cool that they kind of hinted at was during the period after World War II, that even though the Allies did win the war, it was a big turning point for both the uh, French and British empires where even though they were on the winning side, the, the war exposed the fact that they were no longer invincible and could no longer effectively govern and protect their empire. So that's why after World War II, you saw a mass decolonization happen for, you know, in both empires. So, so yeah, I just thought it was like a nice tidbit that they kind of hinted at. That was, uh, that was pretty nice. Now I'm gonna hang to my second museum of the day, which is gonna be the Imperial Maritime Museum, which is also on the south side of London, so south of the River Thames. While on the way to the Maritime Museum, I actually decided to take a, a step and go through the Greenwich Market, uh, and actually really the whole town of Greenwich, which is part of London, but really almost kind of almost on the outskirts of London. Uh, it's a beautiful area, has a lot of shops uh, and little restaurants, so definitely take that route while you're on your way to the museum. went to the Portuguese and Spanish maritime museums. I definitely had to check out the, the British one because same, all, all three countries had large empires. So had a, you know, they had to have uh, large navies, large uh, merchant 
uh, fleets uh, to actually manage uh, their empires. So it actually created a um, it creates for a good uh, history lesson. And at the same time, if you're a navigation geek like myself and, and a travel nerd, this is these are museums is probably a big must for you to go check out. Just finished with the museum. Yep, but right behind the Maritime Museum is the Greenwich Park, which holds the Greenwich Observatory. And this is where the, the Prime Meridian Line sits, uh, separating uh, the Eastern Hemisphere and the Western Hemisphere. Of course, this is a, an imaginary line, however, it, it, is, it was very important for, for navigation. So if you like this stuff, then gotta check it out. Cool. Nice view of London from here, though is the Royal Observatory. While you're here, you definitely want to take a photo and video of the Prime Meridian line that goes right through the property, uh, as you can see here. The Prime Meridian. One thing I didn't expect about this place is a really good view of the London skyline, so shit, man. Check it out. Now my next museum I think is going to be the London Docklands Museum. Seems pretty interesting. And while on my way to the next museum, I walked through the Royal uh, Naval College, which has a beautiful campus, uh, very pristine, again, just very, uh, very antique uh, buildings. And it's actually just free to walk through it. It's not, um, it's not anything you have to pay for. It adds a little bit to the walk, but I think it's actually pretty cool. You know, just because it is very British feeling. Dark pretty uh, pretty early here, but Docklands Museum is right up. One of the premises behind this museum is that London used to be a big had a, had a big port, but when the main ports closed down, they turned this whole area in the Isle of Dogs uh, or Canary Wharf. What is now, it's, what at least this neighborhood is called uh, Canary Wharf, they turned it into a financial center. So it, they had to revitalize the, the sector going from shipping to finance and banking. Right here, this is uh, Somerset House, it's a museum. Actually, I shouldn't just say it's a museum because it's also just an event uh, uh, venue. It's really pretty at nighttime. I'm definitely glad I came here later in the day because everything is well lit. 
Otherwise, in the morning or afternoon, you wouldn't be able to see this. After leaving Somerset House, uh, I decided to go over to the London Eye, which is relatively close by. Uh, and the walk was beautiful because the city, even around this time during uh, the American Thanksgiving holiday, is already being set up and being decorated for, for Christmas, so everything is well lit up and very beautiful. Just finished. And one place that you definitely have to go to is Piccadilly Circus, especially if you've been to New York City. It's almost the equivalent of Times Square, but in London. And from my experience, uh, it's, it's also very pretty, very well decorated, but less homeless people, I feel like, and also fewer, I would say, drug addicts. Uh, definitely check out both, though, and see which one you like best, or maybe you like both equally, but in different ways. First stop of the day today is going to be St. Paul's Cathedral. I'm going to also get go get food after this, but um, since this was right on the way, I decided to stop here. This is from the north side of the cathedral. And here is. St. Paul's Cathedral. Now that I'm here, uh, time to go inside. This is definitely a lot more to what I'm used to since it's a Catholic cathedral. You know, the decorations are very, very specific and very particular. It's supposed to like the Anglican church that I saw in uh, like the, the Abbey in Bath. And maybe um, afterwards I'll, I'll check it out to see how Westminster Abbey is in comparison to this one.
from here you do get a nice view of London. You have to poke your head out though a little bit. See the pedestrian bridge right there. This is from the north side to the south side. Really cool, you get to see the city kind of alive. See the river, the steeples, and the road. Beautiful cathedral. Even though I'm not religious, I always find myself going to uh, cathedrals uh, on trips. Um, yeah, I, I just like that. I do appreciate the artistic nature of them. Here's a north view of the tower, surrounded by the city. Here's the whole compound, but the tower itself is really right over there. It, it does, yeah, it is a little taller than the rest of it. Really pretty. It, it almost seems like this is a really good day to, uh, to be had some people yeah. in the tower. Ah, uh, beautiful day. So this is the, the White Tower, uh, part of the Tower of London complex. It was actually, this whole complex actually began construction in 1066. So this whole area is really about uh, almost a thousand years old. It's really famous for the executions and everything and being used as a prison. But it's also a, it used to be also an armory and just a general fort um, altogether. And part of it is here in this building is the, where the crown jewels are housed. So that's where you actually see the guards, uh, royal guards right there. While here at the tower, you also get a perfect view of the London Tower Bridge and the river. But not only that, you get a great view of the south end of the tower. And when you come out, you get the bridge right here. So I would definitely suggest doing both at the same day because they're right next to each other. It kind of feels like crossing the Brooklyn Bridge, crossing this bridge. Really pretty, really cool view of the river and, and the city. And the Tower of London right there. You're crossing the Millennium Bridge. It's a, it's a pedestrian bridge. And 
here I am at Westminster Abbey. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to take video inside the uh, the Abbey, but I've got a lot of pictures of Walking right here. All right, there is Elizabeth Tower oh, and Big Ben. Uh, right there is the Palace of Westminster, where the uh, Houses of Parliament are. It's nice coming, it's coming through here again, getting a daytime shot, because like last time I was uh, nighttime. The Palace of Westminster, and it, like that it's actually like, right on the water like this. Really cool. In a sunny, cold afternoon. Buckingham Palace. Uh, Buckingham Palace, the official residence of the royal family. Well, one of them, because they have they have several. This right here is Trafalgar Square, named after the Battle of Trafalgar, where uh, Horatio Nelson's uh, the Royal Navy fleet beats, or it defeated um, uh, the French fleet under Napoleon uh, during the Napoleonic Wars. So that's why you see uh, uh, Horatio Nelson's uh, statue right up there. The uh, National Gallery right in front of it. This here is pretty good because you see the National Gallery. Of course, you see the statue. And you'll see Big Ben uh, all lit up at nighttime. Part of the National Gallery is actually free, so um, and they actually stay open until almost uh, until 9 p.m., which is pretty good. So I'll go check it out. Another nice thing is that it's nice and warm in here. It's cold outside, so it gives me a nice uh, break from the cold. Passing here through Leicester Square. I've had some food there, but it's like everything has a really long line, so and it's cold outside, so I want to go inside somewhere. After this video, I will also be doing a separate videos on Bath, Stonehenge, Windsor, and Dover, which are all places I visited while in the UK that were outside of London. So I thought it'd be more concise to do videos separately just for those. Of 
course had to check out uh, Chinatown and try the Chinese food uh, here in London. Usually go if, if, if a city has the Chinatown, I go and I check it out because I like Chinese food. If you got this far, uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope this video is useful for you on your next trip uh, to London. Uh, and if you like this video, leave a like. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, bye.